EXI calculation results. This presentation will introduce the EEXI regulation and calculation guidelines, including the input data. And then we'll share EEXI calculation result for tankers, bulkers, and container ships. At the last part, the procedures for drawing approval will be shortly explained. EEXI is the Energy Efficient Design Index for existing ships and determines how much CO2 in grams is released to carry one ton of cargo for one nautical mile. Each ship's actual EEXI must be below the required EEXI to comply with the EEXI requirement. We have carried out EEXI calculations for 1,259 ship types of tankers, bulkers, and container ships to fully understand the impact of meeting the EEXI requirement on a ship's power and speed. The EEXI formula is the same as the EEDI formula. Therefore, the EEXI calculation method is the same as the EEDI calculation and includes the same correction factors and coefficients. The main difference is that the concept of engine power limitation was introduced in the EEXI regulations. EEXI is applied to ships over 400 gross tonnage engaged on international voyages. 12 ship types are included in the EEXI regulations. This is the EEXI application framework. It's actually quite simple. First, if the calculated actual EEXI meets the required EEXI, then an IEE certificate will be issued without any additional action being needed. However, if the actual EEXI value does not meet the required EEXI value, then efficiency improvements will be required. This could include engine power limitation or changing fuel type or applying other energy saving devices. If these measures satisfy the required EEXI, the vessel will receive an IEE certificate and may continue to trade. It must be emphasized that unlike CII, ships cannot operate if they don't meet the EEXI requirements. This slide shows the main parameters used to calculate the EEXI in accordance with the relevant guidelines. Parameters include power of auxiliary engines, specific fuel consumption, capacity, and ship speed. First, PAE is calculated using a formula according to the output of the main engine. However, where EPL has been implemented, the main engine, MCR, used in the calculation should be the original MCR and not the EPL MCR. Please note this point carefully. For the SFC of the main and auxiliary engines, the SFC used is the value of the NOKES technical file or the SFC specified by the manufacturer. For those engines that do not have a NOKES technical file and which do not have the SFC specified by the manufacturer, the approximated SFC defined in the EEXI calculation guidelines should be used. 190 for main engine, 250 for auxiliary engine. These values are used for SFC, carbon factor corresponding to SFC should be used, 3.114 of heavy fuel carbon factor. Capacities vary by ship types as shown on the slide. The ship speed should be obtained from an approved speed power curve at EEDI draft. However, most existing vessels do not have a speed power curve at EEDI draft. For this reason, MEPC has developed a formula for obtaining the ship speed using three methods including in situations where the sea trial results were conducted neither under the EEDI draft nor design load draft. The difference from the MEPC 75th result is the addition of a formula for a ship which has a sea trial report under the design draft. And this formula only applies to bulk, tanker, and container ships. Now we will share the EEXI calculation results with you. First, let's see the EEXI calculation results for tankers. 
The calculation result is divided by pre-EEDI and post-EEDI vessels. A pre-EEDI vessel is a ship to which EEDI has not been applied. The table shows the total number of ships used in the EEXI calculation for post and pre-EEDI ships, and also the number of ships that satisfy, or not, the EEXI requirements as well as the failure rate. For the pre-EEDI ships, we calculated the EEXI for 406 ships and found that 306 of them did not satisfy the EEXI. In case of post-EEDI ships, we calculated the EEXI for 105 and found only 7 ships that did not satisfy EEXI. In the graph, the red dots indicate the pre-EEDI ships and the blue dots indicate the post-EEDI ships. Those vessels above the green line have satisfied EEXI requirements and those below have not. As you can obviously see, most pre-EEDI ships have not satisfied EEXI requirements. The left graph shows the amount of power reduction required to satisfy the required EEXI for each size of ship. The right graph shows the speed reduction required in accordance with power reduction. Pre-EEDI ships are shown by the red bars, and the post-EEDI ships are shown by the blue bars. For pre-EEDI ships, those of 6K will require a power reduction of 19%. 50K vessels require 42%. 110K requires 34%, and 315K requires 39%. The average power reduction rate is 32% of MCR to satisfy EEXI requirements. Conversely, for post-EEDI ships, the average power reduction rate for each ship size is 13% of MCR to satisfy EEXI. For pre-EEDI ships, those of 6K, will need to reduce speed by 0.9 knots. 50K vessels required a 2.3 knot reduction. 110K is 1.9 knots, and 315K is 2.5 knots. The average speed reduction to satisfy EEXI is 1.7 knots. Conversely, post-EEDI ships require an average speed reduction of 0.7 knots. The table below shows the average speed reduction to satisfy EEXI requirements. For pre-EEDI ships, the average ship speed before EPL is 13.7 knots. This speed could be reduced to 12 knots after EPL with difference of 1.7 knots. But for post-EEDI ships, the speed reduction before and after EPL is 0.7 knots. Therefore, it can be seen that for post-EEDI ships, the reduction of power and related ship speed to satisfy EEXI is small when compared with pre-EEDI ships. This slide shows the EEXI calculation results for bulk carriers. The overall trend is similar to the results from tankers as explained on the previous slide. For pre-EEDI ships, we calculated 370 ships, and most of them failed to satisfy EEXI requirements. On the lower right graph, pre-EEDI ships are marked with red dots and show that an average of 30% of these ships fall into the unsatisfactory category. For pre-EEDI bulk carriers, the average power reduction rate for each ship size is 42% of MCR to satisfy EEXI requirements. Conversely, for post-EEDI ships, the average power reduction rate for each ship size is 15% of MCR to satisfy EEXI requirements. To satisfy EEXI requirements, pre-EEDI ships must achieve an average ship speed before EPL of 14.2 knots. This speed could be reduced to 11.8 knots after EPL with difference of 2.4 knots. For post-EEDI ships, the difference in ship speed before and after EPL is 0.7 knots and is similar to tankers. This slide shows the EEXI calculation results for container ships. Again, the overall trend is similar to the results from tankers and bulk carriers as explained earlier. 
For pre-EDI ships, we calculated 225 ships and 79% did not satisfy EEX requirements. For pre-EEDI ships, the average power reduction for each ship size is 43% of MCR to satisfy EEXI requirements. For post-EEDI ships, the average power reduction rate for each ship size is 12% of MCR. To satisfy EEXI requirements for pre-EEDI ships, the average speed reduction required gives an average ship speed before EPL of 21.7 knots. This speed could be reduced to 17.6 knots after EPL with a difference of 4.1 knots. For post-EEDI ships, the difference in ship speed before and after EPL is 0.8 knots. This result is very similar to tankers and bulkers. To sum up, for pre-EEDI ships, most ships did not satisfy the EEXI requirements and an average of between 19% and 59% power reduction could be required. For ship speed, reductions between 0.9 and 6.5 knots could be needed to meet the EEXI requirements. We are predicting that the average service speed of container ships may not be affected by speed reduction requirements as the current design of speed of container ships has already been optimized at around these levels. The calculation results given in the presentation have been based on conservative statistical methods. If we had used ships' actual data as well as corresponding correction factors such as CSR tanker and bulk carriers, then the speed and power reduction requirements could be decreased. For post-EEDI vessels, the amount of power and speed reduction to meet the EEXI requirement is small when compared with pre-EEDI vessels. Lastly, let's take a look at the drawing approval procedure for the application of EEXI for pre-EEDI vessels and post-EEDI vessels. In the case of pre-EEDI vessels, the final EEXI technical file is to be submitted along with the EPL management plan because most existing vessels do not satisfy EEXI requirements and it will be necessary to carry out an EPL. There is no need to submit preliminary EEXI technical files as you would do with new buildings. For post-EEDI vessels, they will already have EEDI technical files and an IEE certificate. So, for post-EEDI vessels, we only compare with the required EEXI by using the value on the IEE certificate and without the need for a separate calculation of the attained EEXI. If the value of the attained EEDI is equal to or less than the required EEXI, there is no need for an EEXI technical file. Only ships which do not satisfy EEXI and where special measures such as EPL are needed will be required to submit the EEXI technical file for approval. Thank you for watching our video and our experts would be very happy to further answer any questions when you contact us via email or through our KR website.